Hi, this will be a short video on uh, manipulating the DOM with JavaScript. And um, let's take a look at some notes here, right? So one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to manipulate the DOM. So the DOM is the set of tags that make up your web page. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Here we have some tags. You know, I have some divs here with the class names and a, and a tag that is called a button, right? Um, this is the DOM. So all the elements here exist within a hierarchical structure. Um, the tag on the outside has an opening tag, and then the tag here with the slash is the closing one. You can see brackets kind of colors this one green and that one green to show that they're related, right? This is the opening tag, and this is the closing one. You can see this happens again up here. If I click on this one, these two open and close. So the tags here, this um, class, well, the tag here with the class B and the, cl the tag down here with the class D, these are children of class A. And this tag here is a child of class B, right? Or div class B, right? Um, and these two actually would both be children. And then the button right here would be a child of C1. And this would be C2 down here, and it has no children. Um, so anyway, what can you do with this stuff? Well, essentially, HTML defines the structure of your document. CSS applies the, the presentation or the appearance. And then JavaScript is used to um, add logic and interaction to, uh, to your pages, right? Um, with JavaScript, you can... Um, manipulate all the elements in the DOM, and you can also set styles and define new elements. Okay, so actually you could use JavaScript to create whole web pages. So you could write the logic in JavaScript that generates all of the HTML structure and applies styles to all the elements on the page. And then you can manipulate those styles, you know, through interaction, okay? Um, let's talk about selecting elements on the page. So to select an element that exists on the page, um, the, the JavaScript API has a whole bunch of methods. I'm gonna just go over a couple of them here. Um, there's get element by ID. So this finds any element by its ID name. Uh, get elements, notice the S right there, it's plural, right? By class name, finds a, a collection of elements via their class name. Query selector lets you write any CSS selector and in here in the parentheses here and it returns all the elements that were selected okay or actually query selector returns the first element that was found that matches that query if you use query selector all it returns a collection of all the elements that match the 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 query okay um, and then you can say get elements by tag name right so again this is this is plural so it returns um, a collection right so some of these return a single element um, get element by ID and query selector and get elements by tag name and get elements by class name and query selector all these return collections okay so in reality you, you don't need to use all these in some cases you might want to pick one out because it helps you out in your particular circumstance but just really just to get started and to learn how to use this you really only need get element by ID and then you might use get element by query selector so these two are the important one. And really, like if you if you wanted to dump get element by ID, you could actually just use query selector because you could find an element by the ID using the query selector. So um, so between those two, you know, this is probably the most important one, but get element by ID is really convenient. Essentially, like when you add an, an ID to an element in 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 the DOM, you're kind of giving it a, a special identifier that is meant for JavaScript, right? So so get element by ID is kind of a good one to use, um, but then query selector is a little more flexible. So, and then these other ones kind of help you out in other cases, okay? And, and um, let me point out that get elements by class name and get elements by tag name and a couple other element, uh, a couple other selectors that I didn't include here return a live collection. In other words, if the collection changes in the future, they're, they're the collection that they return updates to show that. So um, so those actually, that's actually kind of a special feature too that might be useful in some cases. But but for the everyday usage, you know, get element by ID and query selector are probably like your your best two to start with, right? Um, let's, let's try this out. So I'm going to make a new document um, right here and I'll save this. You know, and you can just do anything you want with this, right? I'll call it uh, um, call it example number two. Dot HTML, 
And what I want to do is I want to create sort of a hierarchy of of divs. So I'm going to give this first div a class name of, you know, um, how about we'll call it A, right? And then I'll give this guy an ID of B. And maybe we'll put another tag inside here, like I'll put a paragraph in there, right? And then maybe down here I'll add another div and uh, we'll give it an ID of um, C, right? Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, omitting the um, the uh, the rest of the HTML stuff, like the body tag and the HTML tag and the doc type, right? So just to keep things simple, and this should work just fine, right? Just like this. So, so anyway, so I've got A, B, and C, and I've used ID names here, right? And A is the parent. B and C are children of A, and the paragraph here is a child of B. Okay, so let's add a script tag and let's just try and select one of the elements here. So I'm going to define a constant called um, div A. Okay, and I'll use document dot get element by ID. And the element that I want to get is the element with the ID name of A. Okay, now in, in CSS, you would put the hash mark in front to denote that this was an ID, but since we're, we're calling get element by ID, it knows that we want an, I, an element with an ID, so we can just include the name, okay? And then if we want to um, log this to the console to see if it worked, we'll, uh, we'll put div A here. And I'm in, uh, in brackets, and it has this um, kind of live server thing, so I'm going to use that to update my page here. And there we go. I can see hello right there. I'll zoom in on it, right? So that's the, the paragraph there. And these other divs are kind of invisible to us. But uh, if I inspect and I go to the console here, you can see that when I did um, div get element by ID A, and then I console logged div A in the console here, you can see it shows me div with ID A. And if I open that up, you can see it has these other elements inside, right? So essentially, like it found this element, right? Let's try another one. Let's say const, um, let's find um, uh, ID B, right? So we'll say div B document dot get element by ID, and we can say element B. And if I say const, or let's say console log div B, then if I refresh the browser here, you can see it found B. And if I open that up, you can see it has the paragraph hello. Okay. So anyway, so that should get you started using um, using JavaScript. And we'll in the another video we'll talk more about how to how to manipulate these things and do more stuff with it. But this is how to get started, right? Um, we've got some structure on the page. We can assign IDs to elements, and we can find those elements with get element by ID.